Hi everyone, this is Grace and today I'm going to be walking you through how I made this set celebrating black women's hairstyles. Now there are a lot of cookies in this set, there are over 20, so I have messed with the order a little bit of the cookies to try to make more sense of this. I've grouped cookies together that are the same cutter but different techniques and styles that I've used and I've grouped similar techniques and, and styles and shapes where I can. So let's get started. First up, I am doing this uh, braids style. And the first thing you saw that I did, I used an edible marker, which I will link in the description of the video. And I just traced out the, the shape of the face loosely and the ears. And I'm using a single consistency outline and flood here. Now in terms of the tracing, you could definitely project an image if you need to. Um, you'll see me do that later on with some shapes I'm less comfortable doing. And you'll also see that for all of the faces, I'm doing a one consistency outline and flood. And that was just for pure simplicity. And I didn't feel the need to have to do two consistencies in this case. And something else you'll see, <laughs> as you'll see here, is that I didn't wait for the body of the face to completely crust before doing the ears. And sometimes it kind of worked and some kind, sometimes it kind of didn't. Um, and you'll see here that there's just the slightest, the slightest separation um, between the face and the ears. Would have been better for more separation, but I guess I just wasn't patient enough this time around, <laughs> but that's okay. So let's talk about these braids. First off, you're seeing me use a cookie swivel here. That is the, the swivel base thing that my cookie is on. I try not to use a cookie swivel unless I absolutely need to. And in this case, I needed to because something like piping this technique, piping the hair, doing this kind of uh, pressure piping, I can only do it from a certain angle and I need to constantly turn the cookie around to optimize the angle of my piping. And if I don't have the cookie swivel, then I have to move the cookie around and it's really dangerous, not dangerous, but, but you're asking for trouble if you pick up the cookie with your fingers while it's still wet because I can't tell you how many times I've picked up a cookie and smashed the edge of the icing because it's just ever so slightly coming over the edge of the cookie. So if you don't have a cookie swivel, believe me, you will survive. I would suggest putting it on a square of paper towel so that you can lift up the paper towel and move it to the angle that you need. So you see I've turned this around upside down already. So. Let me actually talk about the hairstyle here, and this is braids. I'm doing what I call, I think what most people call the knit technique, which is just a series of hearts, essentially, pressure piped hearts. So this is a technique that is kind of hard to conceptualize sometimes, and it's, it's hard for beginners to execute, but once you get it, it is so useful. You can do it with so many different things. And so the reason that it's called pressure piped hearts or pressure pipe knitting is that I am actually adjusting the pressure on my bag. So the down, um, the initial stroke is a lot of pressure on the bag. And then as I'm pulling down, I'm releasing pressure on the bag. So it's a lot of things at once. <laughs> you're changing the pressure on the bag and you're moving the tip of the bag all at the same time, which is why I think Coordination wise, it can be a little, a little challenging, especially for beginners. Now, you're gonna see me here. I did two layers. I probably could have just used an edible marker to mark the bangs across the face or the or the the swoop across the face that I'm doing right now, but I found it easier to just pipe this line and then I immediately piped over it with the braid and, and now you can't see it and I have my nice guided line because um, I personally can just uh, do a, a piped line like that more neatly and cleanly than if I had just tried to actually pipe the braid across the face. Now, something I could have done and may do the next time I try this, just something to keep in mind, you'll see that I'm covering about a third to maybe half of 
the braids that I had originally piped with this second layer of braid and the braids take a long time to pipe so maybe next time I will think this through a bit more fully and you could just flood the upper portions of the braids. Now I would say the disadvantage to that, I mean since you're covering it no one's going to know that it's just flooded. The disadvantage is that since I'm using medium peak piping consistency here, I didn't mention that, Let's, I'll talk about that in a minute, um, but I use medium peak piping consistency so I can immediately pipe on top that second layer because I have a thicker consistency underneath. Here are the braids. Look at those gorgeous braids. Um, if I had done flooding, I would have needed to wait for that flood to dry. Now I suppose I could have flooded the top portion of the hair at the same time that I did the face. So then it would just be a matter of waiting for both of those portions to dry. But I digress. <laughs> this is how I did this. And you'll see I did all of these um, longer hairstyles the same way. Alas. Now, this cookie, I am doing locks for this cookie, and I'm approaching it from the beginning the same way I sketched out the shape of the face with an edible marker, and I'm using a single consistency outline and flood here. Now, I could take a moment to talk about the skin tones that I chose. It was hard to rein myself in. I went with three skin tones, a light, a medium, and a dark. I used predominantly chocolate brown for the medium and the dark, and I added a bit of black to both of those, obviously a bit more black to the darker skin tone. And then for the lighter skin tone, it was a combination of a tiny bit of chocolate brown, a tiny bit of ivory, I might have even added a little pink. Clearly I wasn't paying super close attention here, but all I know is that skin tones are hard and they involve a lot of tweaking. So let's talk about the hair. As I said, this is locks that I'm doing here. And that little line that I piped at the beginning, again, that's just a guide for myself. And again, I could have used an edible marker, but I was going to cover it with icing anyway. So this is another type of pressure piping. And in this case, I am holding consistent pressure on my bag. It's just the motion of my bag. I'm using a medium peak piping consistency so that it retains its shape, so that it retains the motion that I'm doing with the icing. If I had used something softer, like a soft peak, it would have melted more together. And, and even here, this is kind of the softer end of a medium peak, um, but it worked. So the pressure, or the, excuse me, the motion that I'm doing is this back and forth. Um, how can I describe this? <laughs> it's a back and forth motion. Um, it's a very, very small motion. So I'm, I'm going back and forth, but I'm clearly pulling the bag away at the same time so I can actually create a line with it. If I didn't move the bag as well, then I would just be creating one big blob in one spot, which is obviously not the goal here. So again, I'm using my cookie swivel. God bless this cookie swivel. I agonized for a long time about what size cutter I wanted to buy because I knew I was going to be doing detailed work like this hair and this kind of stuff, if you don't plan right, <laughs> can take you forever um, in two different ways. So maybe you have the like a good size cutter but you cut the size of your hole, excuse me, the tip of your bag too small then you have way too many strands to pipe. Or let's say you just have a gigantic cutter and you're doing a reasonable size hair, but it's just, there's just too much surface to cover. So I ended up with three and a half inch cutters. Speaking of cutters, these are all from Yomi Market on Etsy and they are linked in the description of this video. Please go check them out. All of their listings um, of the cutters that I used have photos of my cookies on there, so they're super easy to find. They have several other designs 
for women, but also men and lots of other, um, lots of other products that they sell to celebrate their own African heritage. So highly recommend go check them out. Another thing to talk about in terms of colors here. So I went with two, as I said, I went with three skin colors and two hair colors. Also very hard for me to narrow it down, but I knew that I wanted to really focus on as many hairstyles as possible and working with five colors to begin with. And then I had the colors of the sparkles as well that I did for this set, but it was just, it was already overwhelming enough. So I wanted to just kind of rein it in. Um, I would have loved to have done more hair colors next time. Um, but for this one, I did a brown and a black and the brown, this brown is mostly chocolate brown with some black in it for sure. And then, but it, back to the brown, I wanted it to stay still kind of warm, so not really too much black. And then the black is, is just black. And speaking of black, um, black coloring. So actually, I think that I'll address, address that in the next cookie because the next cookie has black hair. So these locks I do do in another shape. I do a lock bun later so you'll be able to see this technique again. The braids like that I only did once so that first video is it. Here we go with the locks and next up this would be twists. So for the twists, um, starting off the same here, same deal, same deal. So I'll talk over this for a minute. In terms of black food coloring, black food coloring or black icing, I should say, is notorious for tasting badly. And that's because really pigmented colors like black and red in particular require a lot of food coloring in order to get that in, to achieve that intense pigment. And if you're using gel food coloring, which is the most common, it takes a lot of gel food coloring. And if you use too much, which sometimes you have to, it dis flavors, it messes with the flavor of the icing and it makes it bitter and not taste good. Now what I use for black, and I've been using this for maybe a year, more than a year, is the, the Sugar Art Master Elite in black and the sugar art master elites are a highly pigmented powder what is amazing about this is that it takes significantly less powder to color black icing to a truly rich black and it doesn't mess with the flavoring now additionally for me i use lemon juice to flavor my icing so i also think that helps with any um any any flavor problems that might occur from too much food coloring. So I recommend the lemon. I love the lemon. Now let me talk about the hair here. So these are the twists. Again, I'm using a medium peak piping consistency and I'm doing this coil motion that is more or less perpendicular to the surface of the cookie. And this is to achieve that twisting coiling motion. So it's, it's a coil around and around. Um, if you've ever seen those rope borders on cakes, I know that was big a while ago, um, still kind of is big, but this is the same concept, just much smaller. And it's, a, pro I would say, probably a bit tighter too of a coil than, than the rope borders you see on, on cakes. I find this so mesmerizing to do and actually can be pretty fast once you get the hang of it. I was actually pretty surprised to discover that these styles with all of this hair took me in the region, I think, of six minutes, which I definitely thought this would have taken me a lot longer. Uh, so pretty, pretty proud of myself for that. <laughs> All of these cookies I did, I believe I, goodness, now I can't remember. I did two to three of each design, I believe. I had a lot of cookies to cover. 
Certainly for a lot of designs, I just did two. And so when I'm just doing two cookies of a design, I will do, I will film one and I will not film the other. So I will do the one I'm not filming first just to make sure I, I know what I'm doing and I know how it looks and I know how, and it looks good. And then I will film the second one. When I first started filming, I made a lot of each cookie like six ten twelve and that was when I was more you know towards a beginner intermediate cookier and what that gave me was the ability to just have a lot more practice getting the cookie in and then I would film and I also kind of back in the day I used to film two shots two cookies of each design so I had more footage to work with because you know, I would make a mistake, either actually my fault or just things happen. You know, sometimes, sometimes you knock the table accidentally or, um, you know, what happens to me is I maybe move the cookie on the surface accidentally with the tip of my bag. And, and you know me, I love satisfying videos and it's not so satisfying when the cookie gets jostled. <laughs> um, but these days I live a bit more on the edge and I will film often just one cookie of each design, which is a little nerve wracking. Um, I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to hold my tongue here because in this set, I actually made 24 cookies designs, but the videos for two of them did not turn out well. I can't remember exactly what happened. I think there was a portion of one that I just somehow completely forgot to film. And then there was a second one where I was piping the last of the cookie of that shape. And I completely forgot to film it. So I scraped it and then started filming it again. And cookies that have been scraped and then filmed again, they don't look great. So anyway, here are the twists. Um, don't worry, the two that I missed, they were just different iterations of shapes I'd already done. So no great shakes, but lesson learned. This cutter I am very excited about. I got to design four new cutters with Yomi Market, and this was one of them. Um, these are Bantu Knots, and I really, I was just so excited to make this style come to life. This is a bit different in terms of, of shape and style than the rest of the cookies because the face is very large. <laughs> This is more of a standard, um, a standard size face, I guess I would say. Speaking of faces, I guess I should, could address the fact that I didn't actually do faces on these cookies. There were a couple of reasons I didn't do faces on the cookies. Um, to be honest, the number, no, I would say they're tied for, they're tied for first place. First of all, I just wanted this to be about hair. I wanted this set to be about the hair. Um, I also was considering putting earrings on the, the beautiful heads and <laughs> the beautiful ears, um, but ultimately decided on no earrings and no face for the same reason in that I really wanted it to be about the hair. The second reason I didn't do faces is because, to be honest, I, I wasn't confident in myself that I could do it and do it well. Um, to be very, very honest, this set was very much a challenge for me. I'm not a portrait or face person cookier. I made my first ever people cookies in December of 2020 of last year when I did my Santa cookies. Um, so this is a territory that's unfamiliar to me, very uncomfortable. I was super nervous about doing the hair. I'm also not terribly known for a lot of detail work. So needless to say, I already had enough on my plate. So I went with faceless faces <laughs> and I'm good with it. Someone I think on TikTok called these faceless angels and I like that. 
I like that. So let's talk about the hair that I'm doing right now. This is a technique that I do on a few different styles where I'm using a medium peak piping consistency. That's important because I want to use something a bit on the stiffer side. And I piped it first and now I'm using a small paintbrush and I realized quite quickly that I had used too much icing, alas and I had to take some of it off. Um, but what I'm doing with that paintbrush is using the paintbrush to actually spread the icing. So for this hairline, I wanted this to, have, to be a hairline with a bit more texture, which is why I'm doing this technique where I'm actually putting the icing on top of the skin. Now, you'll see in a later cookie where I actually do wet on wet for the hairline, and that's just a different approach different option for for doing the hairline. <laughs> I also think it's a bit more realistic because obviously your hair is on top of your scalp. Your hair sticks up. Even if it is very flat and very sleeked back, it still sticks up, if that makes sense. It's 3D. So I'm <laughs> I'm spending a lot of time right now just taking off my excess icing. Oops! Um, if I had used soft peak piping consistency, I wouldn't have been able to achieve quite as much texture as I'm getting right now, so that's why I went with the medium peak. And now what I've done is I wet my paintbrush, and I'm going through and just creating the parts in the hair. Pretty subtle. I could have done them a bit more pronounced, but I wanted them to be more on the subtle side. And this one I realized I used too much water, oopsies, so I dried my brush off and now I'm going through again and pulling that through. And then I made it a bit too pronounced, <laughs> so I went through and kind of tried to muddy it a bit more again. And then the next step, oops, Oh yeah, I got a little bit of black icing on there and I needed to wipe it off. The way that you do that is I wet my brush with some water, wiped off the icing, and now I'm taking a dry brush and I just, and I brush it off. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So here I have a medium peak and I cut a bigger size hole in my bag and I'm doing that same coil motion that I did for the twists, just on a much larger scale. using that cookie swivel totally coming in handy right now because you see I never have to move my hand the cookie comes to me the cookie comes to me that's why I always recommend move the cookie so it's easy for you to pipe these are the Bantu knots and up next, we have the Pixie Cut. This is another cutter that I got to design with Yomi Market. I really had Halle Berry's Pixie Cut in mind when I did this. Granted, her Pixie Cut had much more fabulous volume than this one is going to, but that was my inspiration for sure. Speaking of inspiration, um, I did a lot of research on these styles because, as you might be able to tell from my hand that appears every so once in a while, I am a white woman. Um, I did not grow up knowing a lot about black women's hair, and so I had to do a lot of research for this set. I found tons of inspiration photos. I um, had an original inspiration from Nadia at Kinky Culture Cookie Co. I will link her in the description of the video as well. Um, she did a great Black Girl Magic set in summer of 2020 that was a huge inspiration for me. And I also found a lot of help and inspiration from Renee at Renee Monique Desserts. Also will link her in the description. Um, a wonderful, beautiful black woman who helps me to understand terminology better. Um, she helped suggest a couple of additional hairstyles. 
um, and she was really just a great thought partner in coming up with this set. This is the pixie cut where I wanted to have a bit more, a bit more texture, which is why I'm using a medium peak piping consistency here. And I'm using a bit more icing because I do want it to kind of stand up more than it did maybe for the, the edges of the Bantu knots. And again, same concept, using my paintbrush here, realizing for the bangs that I actually didn't get quite enough icing there. I'm going to add more later. I would say the only downside maybe to the way I decided to approach this is that obviously the lines I'm piping are very clean and hair does not have such clean lines like that. Um, there's more, there's more texture to hair than those perfectly piped lines. So I kind of had to make sure that I was going over those lines to give it a more realistic look. And I'm going to admit here, I struggled with this pixie cut, trying to make sure it looked like a woman and not a boy. <laughs> you may think it still looks like a boy, but, um, I tried. I think the second cookie I did, I made the sideburns way too long. It definitely looks like a man. Oops. Uh, <laughs> but that's why I make more than one, so I can figure out what I'm doing before I start filming it. This one definitely took a lot of finessing. A lot of adjusting. Trying to get it just right. As promised, I am adding a bit more icing here because I didn't think there was quite enough volume on the bangs. So adding a bit more, a bit more so I can get some more volume. And that, my friends, is the pixie cut. Next up, we have the TWA or Teeny Weeny Afro. And I'm just, I'm so excited to share this one with you, largely because of how I did the jaw and the ear. So the first thing I did there was just trace out the jaw and the ear line. And what I'm doing now is I, the very first thing I piped was the jaw and the ear, because I want that to crust over as soon as possible. And now I'm going to pipe the rest of the head and then join the, the ear and the jawline at the very last moment. And by the time I get around to piping that last bit, the original line I piped for the ear and the jaw will have crusted just enough so that I can get separation. When I realized I could do this, I was super stoked. <laughs> so I am using a one consistency outline and flood here. It's pretty thick. So I did need to do a little bit of encouraging to make sure the rest of it was settling into itself. And the thing with icing is that the thicker it is, royal icing I should say, the thicker it is, the faster it crusts. So the thicker your flood, the faster it's going to crust. So you'll see here, I'm using just the tip of my bag to kind of help it all settle into each other. Piping every last millimeter of this cookie until I get to the last second of piping that jaw 
and ear. And now the very important thing is this last stroke that I do, I don't want to be jiggling the tip of my bag because if I jiggle the tip of my bag, I'm going to settle it into that ear and jawline and that's what I do not want to do. So voila, I'm using, there we go, my scribe just to fix that tiny little bit there. I have allowed this to just about completely dry. Actually, no, completely dry. Believe me, let this completely dry. I'm using an edible marker to sketch out the hairline. And the technique I'm doing here is called the, the bear technique. And you want to allow your icing to completely dry for a few reasons. <laughs> well, okay, one main reason. In a second, yeah. So you're using a paintbrush to actually dab the icing. And if this wasn't completely dry, you would absolutely, and I have absolutely done this, poke through the surface of the cookie with your brush. <laughs> Actually, secret, I think I do this later in a cookie and you'll see me do it. Oops a daisy, learn from me. Um, I'm using a flood consistency for this bear technique because I wanted it to be pretty thin. I did realize I used a bit too much icing so there was a bit too much texture on this teeny weeny afro. Just doing some last finessing touches on this teeny weeny afro and there we go. So next up is the afro puff the design for this comes from Nadia Williams. I mentioned her, Kinky Culture Cookie Co. Please go check her out, linked in the description. She did a class on this last summer, which unfortunately I couldn't take, but I hear she's working on another class. Again, I first sketched out the face and the jawline. And unlike what I did with the other cookies. I will be doing the hairline and the baby hairs with a wet on wet technique instead of doing that textured technique on top. So first up I am flooding the face and I need to move pretty quickly here because I need to flood this face and then I need to flood the hairline, lay those edges with wet on wet but move fast enough that this icing I just piped here, this edge of the brown, is still wet enough to be able to do the wet on wet baby hairs. And this was hard um, because I was using one consistency, outline and flood. It would have been a lot easier if I had used a two consistency outline and flood and had, you know, outlined the shape of the cookie and then filled it out. Because when you're working with a thinner icing, as I've mentioned, the thinner flood doesn't crust as quickly so you can do things like wet on wet a lot easier so you can see I piped that hairline pretty quickly and now I'm going in with my thinnest scribe and I'm doing these baby hairs I'm pretty proud of that first baby hair but I will admit my subsequent baby hairs could use some help <laughs> they could use a little bit more training um, as you can see also, my brown has already started to crust ever so slightly, but it is what it is. I moved as quickly as I could. I can tell it's crusted because you can see that layer is a little bit lumpy. Oops a daisy, but I had to keep moving because I needed to get the rest of the hair piped. And then I'm doing more baby hairs at the neck. So I needed to keep moving fast so that I could do the baby hairs with the wet on wet brown neck. And again, what's similar to this from the last cookie is that that neck and ear, that line had just enough time to crust so that now I'm going in with the rest of the neck or with the neck, I should say, <laughs> um, the jaw neck against the jawline that there is some definition in between the neck and the jawline. So pretty proud of that. Getting those little baby hairs. And then I allow that to crust over and now I am doing the Afro puff itself. So here, <laughs> this was a fun technique. Um, I'm using 
let's see, this was, I do believe this was medium peak. Yeah, this looks like a medium peak piping consistency to me. And I have a pretty small tip cut in my bag and I'm just squeezing. Squeezing like a mad woman. You could also use soft peak piping consistency here. And honestly, like I said, the medium peak that I had, had mixed is a bit on the softer side. You definitely do not want to do something too stiff because it will take you five years and a hand cramp later to pipe all of this hair if you're using something too stiff. So just keep that in mind. If anything, I would probably go with a little uh, on the softer side, the less stiff side than the stiffer side. And I'm just trying to make the icing come out of my bag in an inconsistent motion. So I don't want to do the same perfect circle or figure eight every time because I want it to look, I guess, I don't know if realistic is the right, right word, but not quite so perfect. Lots and lots of squeezing later. I eventually get to the volume that I'm looking for. So I don't know how many layers of squiggles this is, but it's quite a few layers because I wanted to get a good amount of hair on there. And there we go, that is the Afro Puff. So up next is the Twisted Updo Frohawk. I know there are a few different names for this, but um, Twisted Updo Frohawk seemed to be a decent consensus. And again, I am sketching out the head and the ears here, and I will be doing the same technique here that I did with the Teeny Weeny Afro in terms of the ear and the jawline. This I would consider probably the more advanced way of doing this. Um, when I do the frohawk later, actually it's the next cookie, look at that. When I do the frohawk next, you'll see I did the jawline and the ear a bit differently and I think that's kind of an easier way to do it. So keep that in mind as you're watching this video. My thick flood the way that I d measure a flood, because I don't do seconds anymore, I do it based off of how the icing falls off the spoon into the bowl. So I mix my icing, I pick up my spoon, I turn it upside down, and I look at how the icing falls off. It is a piping consistency if it doesn't fall off the spoon. Now, a soft peak, like a true soft peak, with enough time will come off the spoon in a blob. Any kind of flood should be able to stream off the spoon to some degree. A thin flood to me just completely streams off the, the spoon in a very consistent, quick manner. A thick flood will just barely stream off the cookie. A really thick flood will like inconsistently stream off, but this flood here is more like it it just barely gives a consistent stream off the spoon if that makes sense and here doing the same thing in, um where i'm using a medium peak piping consistency using a brush to give it texture so speaking of medium peak um i use a medium and a soft peak piping consistency in this set and the way I measure medium and soft peak and stiff peak so I pick up a spoonful of icing and I turn it right side up stiff peak which I did not use here and I only use for florals very rare occasions is it will stand straight up a medium peak will just barely curve over but still hold its shape and a soft peak will completely curve over and the tip of the peak will 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 completely collapse but it but but it still maintains its shape 
If it didn't maintain its shape, it would be a flood at that point. So something to keep in mind. Again, I realized I used too much icing. Oops-a-daisy. <laughs> That's okay. Just take it off. Again, here I'm doing the parts with a wet paintbrush. So just taking off the icing with that wet paintbrush. The one downside to my situation right now with my swivel is that there isn't really anything grippy on it. You can get grippy things to put on it. My only grippy thing <laughs> is pink. And kind of dirty so I was just rolling with the, the plain swivel but to the twisted part of this twisted updo um, I'm using again the medium peak with a slightly bigger tip and I'm also applying a tremendous amount of pressure on my bag a tremendous amount of pressure <laughs> a lot of people get scared of um, popping bags it does happen and I will say there are varying degrees of quality of tipless bags out there I love my tipless bags from Borderlands Bakery I linked them in the, in the description of the video I've had maybe two bags pop ever they're very sturdy but they're still good tipless bags so that is how I made the twisted updo and as promised up next we have the frohawk now, for this frohawk, I'm doing the side profile with the jaw and the ear a bit differently than you've seen me do thus far. Starting somewhat the same though, I am tracing here um, actually just a picture of a real frohawk that I found on the internet because I was really, really, really struggling with getting the right proportions on the profiles. I found the profiles hands down to be the, much harder than the, the front facing designs. And you'll see me later definitely screw up one of the profiles, but to this one. So what I'm doing here that's different is I'm using piping consistency to actually outline the jaw and the ear. And I'm building it up with two layers in hindsight, maybe should have just done one, that probably would have been sufficient. But I built it up so that when I flood next to it, which is what I'm doing right now, it will leave an, um, a, a man-made <laughs> crevice, um, man-made separation in between the flood sections. It keeps the flood from flooding into itself. So it gives you that definition. This is, I would say, an easier way to do the um, the the ear and the jaw than what I showed previously. What I showed previously takes um, it's a bit trickier in terms of the timing of executing it because you have to work pretty quickly. This works a bit easier because it's not, time is not as such, time is not as much of an essence. I'm getting that phrase wrong. That's fine. Moving on. So I kind of take that back. I do think you should double up on the line like I did here. Um, to be honest though, so this was the first profile cookie I did. And I didn't like how I did the ear and the jaw, which is why I came up with doing the other method that does not use an outline like this. So do whatever your preference is. Using my scribe here to help this settle out because this is what I call my thick flood. I know I talked about flood consistencies earlier. This whole set is my thick flood, which is what I use when I'm doing one consistency outline and flood. Now here I'm doing this hairline again, <laughs> or not again, but I've done this on a few cookies so far, same kind of concept. 
using the medium peak piping consistency. I'll take a second to talk about that projector that I was using. I also link my projector in the description. I have two, kind of have the more baseline model and then I have um, a fancier, higher quality model. They're both fine. I prefer the higher quality Bluetooth model. I do think the image is quite a bit bigger, better, excuse me, better. And you can connect your devices with, um, with Bluetooth, huge benefit. And I used the projector just on a couple of these cookies to get a better trace on the actual profiles. Something a little bit different that I did here, you'll see I'm doing the, um, the hair here in two different sections because I'm using a thicker consistency. And as I've mentioned, the thicker the consistency, the faster it crusts. And I, I don't think I've explained crust. Crust is just um, the term that describes royal icing drying because it crusts over. It becomes hard from the outside first and then completely hardens all the way through. So I used, I did this in two sections so that I didn't have to stress so much about getting the whole thing done before that icing started to crust because once it starts to crust, it really is not very friendly to work with, especially doing something like this where you're painting um, where you're painting the icing with a paintbrush. So the what I'm doing here with the, the Afro texture, I am using a soft peak piping consistency and I'm doing that same coiling motion as I did for the twists. I chose to use a soft peak because I wanted the texture to blend more and I did because I didn't want to be able to see the such defined um, kind of lines that I'm doing right now. I wanted it to just kind of blend a bit more into one texture, but still just have a little bit of the kind of coiling motion coming through. This takes me a bit of time, so I will come back when I am done piping this first bit. After I piped that first layer, I thought that it was just a bit too defined, or uh, excuse me, a bit too mushy um, because my soft peak was very soft at this point. So I went back through and just added a few more coils, curls um, on top to give it a bit more dimension all about the dimension and the texture here. And I was trying my best to not make them quite so, um, quite so strategic or straight. Like I'm a very, I'm a very precise person and I, I like symmetrical and, and you know, this is hair. It's, it's not, it's not geometry, it's hair. Um, so trying my best <laughs> to make this a little more, a little more natural looking. And I believe that is it. Oh, no. Oh, okay. I added just added just a couple more. I wanted a little more dimension. Oh, or also maybe I thought the scalp looked a little too big. <laughs> Again, I really, I really struggled with these profile cookies.
and there we have the frohawk and yes i'm aware the photo has black hair <laughs> and the video i did has brown hair long story so up next we have the big full beautiful afro and this is the one as i mentioned earlier <sighs> this is the one profile that if i could do it again <laughs> i absolutely would make some significant and not significant i would make definitely some some adjustments to what I'm doing right now because I even though I thought maybe the afro wasn't quite big enough and I made it bigger I realized after I made the cookie that I still didn't make it big enough because <laughs> the way it looks right now um well you'll see in a second let me let me not let me not ruin the suspense of <laughs> what this ends up looking like. I still think it's beautiful, beautiful, but it's not so anatomically, anatomically, anatomically correct. Let me go look up that word. I'll be right back. Yes. In fact, anatomically is the word I was looking for. Um, as you can see, as I'm starting to flood the face here, there is so much face showing that I definitely should have done an ear and it's all almost so big that it looks like an entire scalp. <laughs> um, eek. I'm sorry. Here we are though. But I, I love the texture that I did with this afro. So I'm excited to show you that part at the very least. And if you do this cookie, don't do like me and make sure you make the afro bigger than I did. Um, what I was going for is that I wanted the afro to actually cover the ears, like a really full, beautiful afro. I failed, but I, tr I tried, and next time I, I will do better. So right now, let's see, uh, that was an easy jawline to do because I could just do two separate pieces, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now I am doing the afro. And for this one, I'm actually using flood consistency. And I'm just going to be flooding this whole cookie. And the technique I'm going to be doing is what I call the crackle technique. I don't know if there's a more official name for this, but big fan of this technique where you flood a surface with flood consistency and then you wait for it to just crust over and then you poke it with an implement. <laughs> so the number one question always is how long do I let it dry before poking it? And this is a hard question to answer because it really depends on the environment that you're in, the temperature of your room, the humidity, because that all affects how quickly royal icing dries. But then also, are you drying it in front of a fan? Are you not using a fan? Are you using a dehydrator? In my case, I use a dehydrator and I believe I left this in for five minutes in my dehydrator and that worked perfectly. Typically what I'll do is I'll set a timer for five minutes and I'll check it after every five minutes to see, wait until it gets to the place that I want it to be. And this is at the point where it has just crusted enough so that when I use this implement, <laughs> um, this is by the way, this is a fondant tool, but for the longest time, I just use the end of a paintbrush. Just make sure it's rounded. That's perfect. So you want to just barely crack the surface and not actually poke through. If you poke through, you'll know because you'll get icing on the end of the thing you're using to poke. So that is the afro. Next time it will be bigger, I promise. Here we go. This is the afro puff, also lovingly uh, referred to as a pineapple. This is another cutter that I was able to design with Yomi Market. Super stoked about this one because I actually do two different styles on this. I do an Afro Puff and a Lock Spun. Lock Bun. And yeah, so first up, I'm doing the Afro Puff. I gotta say, again, I found the front facing cookies to be a lot easier to do. It's just, oh, the profiles stress me out a lot. <laughs> And there's just a lot of versatility, I think, with this shape. 
you can do a bun you could do a braid bun you could do a lock bun um you could do a twist bun i'm doing an afro puff here lots of different options Now, similar dealio here <laughs> to the hairline. Clearly, I'm a big fan of this technique. I just really, I really like the dimension that it adds. Because to me, it just, it makes it look like hair on top of the scalp. And I just think that's super cool. I'm using a pretty small brush here. That you can see. I'll try to make sure that I link some brushes in the description. If not, there are definitely brushes in my Amazon shop. And yes, when it comes to brushes, I'm just using paint brushes, but these are brand new, never used on actual paint paint brushes. These I only use on my icing. I clean them with soap and water. I have a whole drawer full of different size paintbrushes that I use for different applications. Now on to the Afro Puff, my favorite part. This is the same technique that I did on the side angle Afro Puff, but I'm using a soft peak piping consistency on this one. I just wanted something a little bit different. I didn't want quite as much definition in the squiggles, which is why I went for the soft peak because you can already see that it's kind of melting into each other. One benefit of using a soft peak versus say a medium is that it's going to be easier to pipe. It'll just come out of your bag easier, which is nicer on the hands. This set was definitely hand cramp city. <laughs> um, a lot of a lot of pressure piping, a lot of fine detail work. But absolutely labor of love. Love this pineapple. Mm, she's gorgeous. So moving on to the next way that I use the same cutter. And this is the lock bun that I mentioned. So approaching this the same. And I'll leave you here while I flood this and I'll be back when it's time for the locks. Alrighty, I am back. So I'm using my edible marker. I love edible markers. This is linked in the description of my video. And I'm doing locks on this one. I'm doing a lock bun. So same motion that I did on the, the locks that were down, the brown locks I did earlier. Using medium peak piping consistency and doing this back and forth motion making sure to cover up the line that i drew with the edible marker nothing like <laughs> tracing 
the line for the edible marker and then not covering it and then everyone can see the line that you traced. Just, just FYI. <laughs> Now this one took me a long time because, as you're about to see, I definitely, I won't say I made a mistake per se, but if I were to do this cookie again, I would not do what I'm about to do. So I did the first layer of the bun doing locks. And as you'll see in a minute, <laughs> I actually end up covering this entire first layer with another layer of locks. Oi. Um, it could have saved myself a lot of time by actually flooding this, um, flooding the, the bun first with black. And I could have done that at the same time that I did the face. And then I would do the second layer on top of that. Now, this was just, I think, a hazard of, <laughs> I was doing so many cookies, brain was in a million places, I only did two of these cookies, and somehow it just didn't occur to me um, to flood this first. So, again, I'm, I'm a work in progress, I'm always learning, and here's a learning moment, another learning moment in this set. I still love how this turned out. So I ended up doing a second layer because I wanted it to be built up more to give more, um, more, more volume. Um, I also wanted the second layer to be at an angle like this to sh try to give a better representation of what, um, of how the locks would actually be put into a bun. So this takes me a bit and I'll be back when I'm done piping these locks. And there we have it, folks. There is the Afro Puff uh, slash pineapple. Now, moving on, we've got the side braid. I was oddly intimidated by this shape as well, and it actually ended up being one of my favorites. I think it's easier to execute than it appears. Same deal here, I just outlined the face, did some little ears, Now for the hair portion. This is similar to how I've done some other hair techniques um, in this set. I'm using medium peak piping consistency. 
and just piping out the sections of the hair. And then I'm going to go through with that small paintbrush again and actually create the final texture of the hair. I like doing this technique because it's kind of like a textured flood almost and you have a lot more control over the amount of texture that you're going for. And again, using medium peak because that's the consistency that is going to maintain that texture. If this was closer to a soft peak, it would settle too much and not have enough texture, um, enough texture left once you brush the brush through <laughs> the icing. I think this is the moment Mm, did I put too much icing? Let's see. Do I pull any off? I feel like I probably should have. But I'm gonna make it work. Yeah, this is me trying to make it work. And there we go. And nope. I'm going through again. <laughs> yes, now we are on to the braid. And this is just like the small braids that I did, but on a larger scale. So I do believe I'm using the same size tip, but I'm just squeezing very hard, which is what is getting this larger braid to come out. And again, it's that pressure piping heart. So pipe a bead, and then as you pull away from the bead, release pressure on the bag at the same time. And that is the side braid. Next up is the Bob cutter. This is another cutter that I was able to design with Yomi Cutters, uh, Yomi Market. And I did two different styles on this, and I think this is actually even more versatile than what I did. I did two styles. I did a straight style and I did twists. And I believe this first one is the straight style. And this one, this one I had a lot of fun doing because it's the whole thing I'm using flood consistency, but then I add a little something extra at the end. Also what I'm about to do here is called flooding in sections. So you can see I marked out the face obviously and the ear and then the three sections of hair. And flooding in sections is a term that means that you are flooding in sections. <laughs> so you flood, um, you flood alternating sections so that you can have definition in between flooded sections. Because if you flood different sections, one next to each other, they'll just um, melt into each other and you'll have a totally flat surface in between the colors as opposed to having a definition. So I wanted a definition obviously in between the face and the hair but also that the swoop of the bang I wanted there to be definition in between that swoop and the piece of hair that comes down on the side. So Flooding in sections again, you allow the sections to crust. I forgot to mention that part. You allow them to crust before you move on to the next section. And you can kind of see, I, I really didn't wait long enough for that ear. That's why there's no definition in between <laughs> the face, the head and the ear, but alas. Doing my flooding here. I think something that a lot of people really struggle with with a one consistency outline and flood is how I could possibly get that smaller line and this thicker flood out of the same bag and it's all about pressure on the bag so when you're using a flood consistency and you're piping an outline you need barely any pressure on the bag to get the icing to come out and you you do more just guiding um, guiding the icing what I'm doing right there, just want to tell you, that's a scribe, and I'm jiggling the icing to help it settle since I am using a thicker flood. 
Now I can go ahead right away and flood this next section because that face is already dry. I will just need to wait for these two flooded hair sections to crest over before I do the bang section last. So again, getting this flood to come out, <clears throat> excuse me, this much bigger flood. Whoa, you see, whoa, you see that? Wow, I'm impressed with myself. Um, it's, it's all about pressure on the bag. I think one of the things, one of the most common things that beginners are afraid to do is apply pressure on that bag. And it can be a little scary, for sure. It can be a little scary at first, but um, that's how you get, especially the one consistency outline in Flood. And now here I am, I have just barely allowed the other sections of the hair to crust so that I can do this last section of hair. And you, you can tell that they look different if you look at that upper left section of the hair. It's a little bit more matte. And then obviously this wet icing is very shiny. Now I need this to almost completely dry, if not completely dry. And what I'm doing right now is I'm just using an edible black paint, but you could certainly use black gel food coloring. And I'm using this tiny detail brush that I have from Chua Cookie. I will also try to remember to link this. It's actually a mermaid tail. It's super fun. <laughs> but this is a tiny de detail brush because I still wanted there to be some dimension on the straight hair. So you could see, this is like the shine of the straight hair that I'm doing here with these small strokes with the black. So nothing crazy here. Really wanted to keep the straight, sleek look. So that's why I added, um, added these strokes just for a little extra something something. And that is the straight look. Up next is the twisted look. Twisted. That's not what I meant. <laughs> this is this is the twist style that I did with this bob cutter. Um, same dealio doing the face here. And I'll come back in a second or more than a second once I have flooded this face. Hey friends, I am back to talk about the twists. I, I'm so obsessed with this texture. I just find it so very satisfying to pipe and I think it looks great. I did try to do slightly larger twists on this cutter than I did on the previous cutter that I did twists. So again, it's that coiling motion just about perpendicular to the cookie. It's going to take me a while, but I will come back in a minute. I want to tell you a little bit about something else I do later.
Hi, I'm back. <laughs> Here I go again. I'm piping my guide and then immediately piping over it with the twist. That was just the easiest, fastest way that I could figure out how to actually guide myself. And I was really, I was really trying to go for <laughs> um, just like one big twist kind of in her face, you know, kind of grazing her face. That was what I was attempting. That's why I didn't connect these like I did um, with the twists on the other cookie. And there you could see me just checking like, hmm, do I need to add another twist? Am I done? Maybe one more twist? And I'm done! There we go. There's another twist cookie. Next up we have the Curly Bob. For this one I definitely took some inspiration from Nadia Williams at Kinky Culture Cookie Co. She does these two beautiful swoops on her bob and I just I just, I'm just obsessed with them because I find it so rhythmic and beautiful and so I wanted to include that in my curly bob as well. And quick plug to Nadia, she's a great friend. Um, last summer she did a class, Black Girl Magic, and I couldn't take the class sadly but I heard amazing things about it and I know she's working on a second virtual class. So I'm so excited for her and I cannot wait to plug that here for everyone to go take her class please go take her class. Um, but when I have more information, I will definitely share that. Now let's talk about these curls. I am using a soft peak piping consistency because I did want these curls to melt just a little bit into each other, not be too defined. And I'm doing the coiling motion, but I'm trying to do it less precisely than I was doing with the twists that were very clearly defined. Here I'm just going for lots of big, beautiful, luscious curls. And <laughs> what you're seeing here is my brain trying really hard not to pipe this in a very symmetrical, like, planned out manner. I'm trying really hard here to be <laughs> um, a little more messy, I guess you could say. deciding about where to pipe next. I do a lot of a lot of this piping, so I think I'll, I'll leave you for a bit for the other side of the, the hair and I'll I'll be right back. Now for some finishing touches, just like I did with the Frohawk, I wanted to add just a little bit more 
dimension uh, with another little bit of layer, adding a few more random curls here and there. And there we have the curly bob. Next up is the head wrap, and I do a couple of different patterns on this one. This design actually took a surprising amount of time because I did this flooding in sections and there are a lot of sections on this head wrap. Okay, well there are one, two, three, four, there are five sections on this head wrap. First up, as always though, I am flooding the face. The reason why this, um, this cookie took so much time was because I had to wait in between each of these sections to allow them to crust. And that just, that all adds up. So the actual act of decorating time, maybe not that significant, but the waiting time in between makes it feel like it takes much longer. So I did do baby hairs on this one and I'm about to show you. So this is a flood consistency again, this black, just doing a little line of black here. And again, this is one where I wish <laughs> I wish I had been a bit more intentional with the baby hairs. Other than this one, this is the one that's around the ear. Um, but I wish I had done um, maybe some more like swoops with the baby hairs, make them lay the lay those edges better. I wish I had laid my edges better. <laughs> um, but learning, always learning. So for next time do some pretty swoops with those baby hairs just like that one and there I was just trying to um, poke back some of the crusted brown and I've just barely allowed that face to have some time to dry and I went in like pretty quickly to do this neck and again doing some baby hairs on the neck So working pretty quickly to do this wet on wet. I'm using my smallest scribe in terms of the tip, like this is a very sharp, thin tip. And that's linked in the description. And now we are on to the scarf portion. So this whole design is a wet on wet design. And as you have learned already, I did a one consistency outline and flood for this entire set, which means that my flood is on the thicker side and doing wet on wet with a thicker flood is hard because you really have to work super fast. And that is what I did here in a moment. There we go. So I'm going in and I'm gonna try to ice these little bits as quick as possible. Now, since I am adding a decent amount of icing to the top of this design, it's it's very important that you not um, add too much icing on your base layer. And I was probably tempting fate here with how much of that pink icing I added. Because the more, obviously, the more icing you add to the top, the more likely it is to, you know, add too much pressure to the surface of the icing that it'll want to fall over fall off the edge of the cookie and now here I'm doing alternating sections so this is the next section I can do and then I'm going to have to allow these two sections to crust before I can do any others. And I think I'll leave you here with the rest of the scarf and I'll be back when it's done.
and there we have this is the first head wrap design I'm about to do a second one all starting the same as the first one so I will leave you here for a moment and I will come back to show you how I'm doing the, the design for the second style For this scarf, oh, hi everyone, I'm back. For this scarf, I am doing another wet on wet design. This time doing a very common, I think one of the, the very first design style things that I learned, techniques with royal icing, was to do this wet on wet pull through. I don't, I, I don't think that's the official name. I don't know if there is an official name. Um, but here we go. I have a scribe and I'm pulling through the icing. I'm dragging it through. And this is the like lazy fast way to do it where you just connect the beginning and the end like this. Um, otherwise, if you do just disconnected pull throughs, like pull up, pull down, you'll want to clean off the end of your scribe after every pull so that you're not getting um, other colored icing at the beginning of your pull it just makes it look kind of messy so the way I did it there this makes it go faster and it looks it looks very intentional when you do the connected pull through on either end so this is what I did for this scarf and I'm gonna leave you here and I'll be back when I'm done
and there we have the second head wrap design. So up next is the head wrap with Afro Puff. This is another design um, done by Nadia Williams at Kiki Culture Cookie Co. I do two different interpretations of the hair on this one, different two different ways to do the hair texture. So starting off, as always, with my sketch, um, my outline with the edible marker, and I'll be rocking some flooding in sections here. Now, in hindsight, um, I could have also added baby hairs to this style. I did not in this case, but next time. Next time, baby hairs for sure. And here I am doing this first part of the face using my scribe to settle it out. Giving that a moment or two to crust a little bit. Oh, I wanted to add a little more definition to the lips. One downside to doing the one consistency outline in Flood here is that something like adding definition to lips was a lot harder to do. But here we are. Doing that neck. Again, this is flooding in sections, but trying not, you saw I did a little jiggle jostle with the tip of my bag. Didn't want to do it too close to that jawline, otherwise I definitely would have disturbed it and it wouldn't have been a nice crease like it is. So I allow that to crust over nicely and I'm now going to do the scarf here, this three section of colors, in one go. So this is not flooding, I mean I am flooding this in sections, but I'm not waiting for these colors to crust. I'm flooding them one after the other so that I have a, a nice flat like connected scarf look, which is what I'm going for in this case. There, there I could tell that I had flooded just a little too much and it was already starting to come off the edge of the cookie. That's why I love that thicker pink scribe um, tool that I was using because it can pull off <laughs> over flooding icing much easier. And here I am flooding right next to each other. Trying very hard not to disturb that beautiful clean first line that I did. Wanting to keep that nice and clean. And then coming in with the next color. Again, not waiting at all. Piping as quickly as I can. Doing a little jiggle as I go to make sure that it all settles by the time I'm at the end. I've allowed that scarf to crust over and now I'm doing this, I don't know what to call this technique actually. Um, it's something that I started doing honestly kind of out of laziness. Um, <laughs> the the motion is like doing a bunch of dots so it's it's up and down motion but instead of completely releasing the pressure on the bag as i'm moving from spot to spot i'm continuing to hold pressure on the bag so icing is still coming out of the tip of the bag but i'm moving around and i'm using a medium peak piping consistency so that it it keeps the texture as i'm poking around the surface of the cookie I hope this is making sense. Um, so it's just this up and down dabbing motion, holding consistent pressure the entire time. Dab, dab, dab. And you're able to cover a pretty decent surface pretty quickly. I've also done this um, in the Santas I did last Christmas. I did that for his beard. It's a great beard texture. And there we have this first head wrap and afro puff look. Now we are going for a second look here. The beginning of this is all the same, so I will come on back when I get to the hair.
Hi friends, I'm back. So, what I'm doing here is I am flooding the entire surface of the hair. You can see I did not wait for the scarf to crust and that's totally fine because of what I'm about to do for this texture. And the texture I'm doing here is the same bear technique that I did on the teeny weeny afro. And uh, spoiler alert, this is the one where I poke through the surface of the hair. Oops. <laughs> I was very impatient, which is why that happened. So I'm using flood consistency here because I wanted minimal, um, minimal added texture from this bear technique. The thicker the icing that you use, the more um, 3D effect this technique will give you. And at the moment, I'm being pretty soft with my dabbing because I know that I'm doing this too early, but I just couldn't wait. This is the moment I think where I realize I have too much icing on the surface of this cookie. And if you have too much icing, especially when it is a thinner consistency, it can be really hard to get the texture to really come out. So what I did just there was I, I took the excess, excess icing off of the paintbrush. And here, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. I haven't poked through the surface of the cookie yet, to my knowledge, and let's see. I think it's going to happen soon. Keep going. I'm still fine. I'm still fine, but I'm obsessing over making sure <laughs> that I get this texture just right. So I'm back again dabbing for what? The third round, and this is where I'm really pushing it. I'm just waiting for this ball to drop. I know I do it. I know I do it. So let's see, when does it happen? I'm trying to get that perfect little edge there. All beautifully done and I just keep dabbing. I just keep dabbing. Oh hey, and somehow I decided it was a good idea to add more icing. Oh, and here we go, here we go. You see, I did it. I poked through the surface. And this is my oh shoot moment. And this was the second of the two cookies I made. So I had, this was it. This was, this was it. So I needed to figure out how to fix that. And <laughs> you can, I think I did a pretty good job. What I did was after it dried, I added some more icing on top to add yet another layer of the bear technique. And I think that covered it pretty decently. So here we're rocking a short afro. Now for this profile, it was a little bit easier because I could just do the, the head, the skull part, um, the skull part first, allow that to crust a bit, and then do the neck. So it's pretty standard flooding in sections, and I'll leave you here and be back when I get to the hair.
And here we go again. This is another example of the dab 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 <laughs> beard texture. Maybe that's what I'll call it, the beard texture. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I'm sold on that. But this is the dab dab, <laughs> what I lovingly call the dab dab. And in this case, I struggled a bit more with this one because definitely my black was a little bit thicker and the tip I had cut was not that big so it took me a while to cover the surface here but it's still I, I really love this texture because I really I just think it's super effective and it's actually, you know, it can be a little time consuming depending on how much surface you have to cover and how, obviously, how big the tip of your bag is. But it's it's very easy to do and it can be messy. That's kind of the point of it. It's not supposed to be super uniform. And there we have the short afro. And now last but certainly not least is this front facing afro. And what I did with this is different from any other design or any other technique that I did for hair in this set. So I'll be back when I get to the hair.
All right, so I have flooded that hair and allowed it to get a nice, pretty significant crust. And now I'm just doing these random swirls. And I really wanted to do this, this technique, this texture um, for a couple of reasons. I know it's not the most realistic looking of the textures I've done, but I really wanted to show a variety of textures and way to ex execute different the same styles in different ways at different I think um, experience levels and in a way I would consider this maybe more of a beginner level um, you know you're just you're flooding the base level of the hair and then using piping consistency it can be medium peak it can be soft peak whatever you have and a pretty small tip and just doing these random squiggles and I just think it adds like a really kind of dreamy effect, kind of whimsical, and I'm a big fan. almost wish I had done this on more of the cutters, but this was a nice one to finish this off with. And there we have it. That is the last cookie, the Afro. And that, my friends, is the entire set. 22 different designs. I had so much fun putting this set together. I hope that you learned a thing or two. And please, please go out, make these exact designs, use these cutters, and please, let's make lots more beautiful cookies of beautiful black women. Spread some love with a cookie, and I hope y'all have a sweet one. Bye.